Hi, this is Kevin Frank. Today is August 3rd, and I am here once again with Dr. Jeff Andreessen for our weather update and a look at uh, maybe what we can look forward to here in the month of August is, uh, unfortunately, summer starts to uh, come to a close, Jeff, so I uh, look forward to hearing from you this week. All right. Thanks, uh, Kevin, and good morning. Uh, and as I, I look at a, a theme here, let me, uh, oh, let me try and get our my slides up here. And share. Do you see mine yet? Yep, looks good. I'll try and there we go. Start with an over overview of the, at least where we're headed, the forecast for right now uh, for Tuesday morning. And what you see is something pretty unusual for late summer. That's a big trough right over the Great Lakes. And so Thinking back last week uh, in our discussion here, we uh, uh, the models did fairly good, fairly well, and it's this is an unusually strong. Trend. This is the reason, if you're wondering why we've gotten minimum temperatures in the upper 40s and low 50s on a nightly basis here for the last couple of nights, and and daytime temperatures, some cases not getting out of the low 70s. That's the major reason why. When you're underneath a trough, northerly flow aloft, uh, just basically cooler air moving in from Canada. Some of that, uh, interestingly, has, has still been uh, hazy with a lot of smoke in it from the forest fires out west, but, but regardless, it's a, a cooler than normal pattern. Now, the map on the right-hand side is what's forecast a week from now. And so what we are looking for, the, if we were given a, a dime version of the, of the forecast here, we're looking at a, a, a gradual but very noticeable warm, warming trend here over the next uh, several days. It's gonna be drier than normal for a while, and then actually maybe turn what are the normal, uh, you can see here in this particular map, uh, a big change across North America, uh, where we had before ridging out west and troughing in the east, or over the Midwest and east, it almost sort of flip flops or reverses and the troughing is out in the Western US, uh, which is good news for the areas suffering from really extreme drought uh, that should help a little bit, at least in terms of temperatures. Uh, but it also means here for Michigan, you can see with the orange color here, this is an, indicates that uh, higher pressure than normal. And so again, uh, strong strong indicator of a warming trend and, and, uh, and, and maybe a more active weather pattern uh, in terms of precipitation than we've seen here recently. Well, for reviewing the past week, I just mentioned with the trough, we've had uh, below normal temperatures or normal to below normal, depending on what part of the state you're in. Uh, near very close to normal in the southern part of the state for the last week, but definitely a few degrees as you move north uh, here. That's on the left. Precipitation wise, for the southern part of the state, it was a fairly dry week. Uh, most of the most of the area here, especially the southern third of lower Michigan, less than half an inch. Uh, we did significantly better than that in the northern part of the state, many areas uh, inch to an inch and a half and even some spots in the yellow here more than two inches. So it just depended on, again, on where you were, uh, drier in the south, wetter as you went north. We had another severe weather outbreak. Uh, remember the last one we talked about was on the 24th, uh, back a, a Saturday before last. We also had uh, what, well, and I call it a severe weather outbreak. It certainly was in terms of regional, but this one, uh, I think we, we could say we, we, with a little bit of a sigh of relief, we, uh, we, we got lucky or we got fortunate here. This, this particular setup, which occurred last uh, overnight Wednesday into Thursday morning, when we looked at the maps and we looked at what was there, it had the potential to be a big, a big outbreak, primarily severe thunderstorm uh, damaging winds, high winds with this particular event. And indeed that did happen, but it was mostly confined in areas to our west. Uh, you can see Wisconsin took or bore the brunt of this one, Northern Illinois, Chicago land area uh, was hit pretty hard, but because of a couple of things, notably that this event occurred in the early morning hours when things are typically more stable in the atmosphere, uh, it led to less coverage in Michigan than certainly had been feared or, or anticipated. We still did get to see the blue, uh, blue symbols here are indicators of high wind damage. And all of this occurred really around sunrise on uh, Thursday morning. The storms moved from northwest to southeast, but it, it just clipped the southwestern corner of the state. Again, it could have been, a, given what we saw on Wednesday night, 
uh, it, it could have been much, much worse in Michigan, but was not. So uh, that's something, I guess, to be a little grateful for in terms of severe weather, but it did uh, certainly impact areas to our west. Our degree day totals here for the season beginning on uh, the 1st of March, you can see most, uh, most of these are in uh, the range of around 1300 to uh, just a little bit less than 2000 at this point in the year that's on the left. And then uh, the uh, more interesting uh, graphic, I think, from the right hand side, where are we relative to normal? We still have over most of the state a surplus, but it's less than what it was uh, a few weeks ago. Most areas here from a few days, uh, two, three days to as many as maybe six or seven day calendar days ahead of normal. One exception, uh, the Huron Mountains, as you can see up in the Upper Peninsula, with some blue showing up here, actually a couple days behind uh, in that part of the state. But for most of the state, we're still running a little bit of a surplus, but it's it's just less than it was. And of course, with the cooler than normal week in some spots, that surplus is less than it was. Soil moisture, uh, given the wetter than normal in the north and drier than normal in the south, for most of the state here on the right-hand side, we had a reduction of about three to 5% of plant extractable moisture in the top three feet, which is pretty typical for this time of the year. Uh, but the percentiles here, uh, in terms of where we are, we're somewhere, most of the state now, near normal to a little bit less than, than normal. We were a little bit be better than that two weeks ago. Uh, on the left-hand side, this is a uh, satellite-derived index of soil moisture availability for vegetation. And I think the, the thing of note here, most of the state is, is in really pretty good shape. There are a couple of, of areas though that we're watching. One continues to be the thumb. And uh, interestingly enough, the thumb did pick up some rain last week, uh, which should help. But the, the browns and orange colors here indicate a little bit more in the way of uh, some minor stress symptoms, uh, but also portions of Western Upper Michigan. That's the area that's been uh, changing probably more than anywhere else in the state, other than improvements that have occurred in the south. But in Western Upper Michigan, we have seen uh, a decline in uh, soil moisture availability, especially over the last several weeks. So those are the two areas that are probably driest climatologically here right now. And But looking at the U.S. Drought Monitor, uh, very, very little compared to what we had a month ago uh, or, or six weeks ago, back to the middle of June. Uh, only about 5% of the state currently now considered to be in either moderate or severe drought. Again, uh, some of that you can see if you look, you have to look uh, fairly hard, uh, the, the thumb area of East Central Lower Michigan, and then there's a couple spots in the UP that have a little bit larger extent of D0, which is abnormally dry. So uh, all in all, especially given where we were uh, as recently as mid-June, many, many improvements, but there still are a couple spots, which we, we just uh, noted here that are still uh, drier than they should be. Well, looking at the forecast here, really pretty straightforward, uh, not very exciting uh, if meteorologically, but that's that's a good thing uh, now and then. High pressure currently right over the Midwest, uh, and it's, it's a Canadian origin high pressure system. So a continuation today of uh, mostly fair uh, dry weather, and uh, we'll call it mild temperatures, a little few degrees below the normals. We should see high temperatures generally in the upper 70s across most of the state today. So a few degrees cooler than, than the long-term normals. Low temperatures tomorrow night, still getting down uh, well into the 50s, but a couple degrees warmer than they have been over the last couple of nights. Now, it is worth noting that, and you can see that drawn in here, the forecast is green area, uh, with lake effect uh, or lake winds or lakeshore onshore winds from, uh, from the lakes, we could see enough convergence and localized lifting in some areas there might be a few isolated showers that pop up in, in a few spots here this afternoon or evening, but definitely the far more the exception than the rule. Most areas will be dry, but there is, uh, don't rule that out, uh, especially I think the central and northern part of the lower, if we see that, that would probably be the most likely place that we would see anything. But, but most areas will once again be very, very pleasant, very, very nice, uh, as has been the case the last couple of days. Now for tomorrow morning, the big blue H here, big high pressure right over uh, Northern Illinois, but that's that's our dominant weather feature. Tomorrow's another dry day and most of Thursday will be as well uh, with, uh, with, with the high sitting over there. But one exception, we will begin to see a warming trend, especially as the center of this high pressure shifts off to the east. Here's Thursday, 
and you can see that happening. Actually, this, they've drawn the center here all the way up into New England here by Thursday morning, and that sets up some return flow out of the southwest, or so our, our winds will shift around from the northwest, which is where they've been over the last couple of days around to the southwest, and we will see a noticeable warming. So by Thursday and Friday, our high temperatures uh, probably up into the low and mid 80s, uh, which is near maybe to agree or two above where they should be, and our minimum temperatures up into the 60s. So that will be uh, somewhat noticeable. Uh, and then the next chance for precipitation probably coming late on Thursday in the western portion of Upper Michigan, and then spreading southeast overnight uh, and into Friday. I think. Uh, we'll see scattered showers and thunderstorms. This is not a widespread rain producer. You can see that here in the green. That's the, the next feature. But we will also notice an increase in humidity. So uh, it's been dry, uh, the relatively low humidities here in recent days. That will also become apparent that there's more humidity there, more water vapor to work with. And so uh, pretty much, uh, I would call it almost statewide on Friday, we will see a chance for scattered showers and thunderstorms, but it will be scattered. That's very important. Many areas will not see much, if anything at all. That threat will actually continue through the weekend into Thursday, into Saturday and Sunday, uh, and uh, probably 30 or 40 percent chance. So not not widespread. The heaviest precipitation with this uh, the, this next batch probably or best chances will be across the northern part of the state, especially the Upper Peninsula and the northern lower, and decrease as you go south from there. But in general, we're looking at a, a pretty much a drier than normal week. Uh, other issue here as we, we move into the weekend, it will be back up to above normal, distinctly warmer than normal and much more humid. Uh, we will see highs probably approaching 90 again by, uh, by Sunday and Monday, uh, early next week. And that's sort of the pattern that the medium range, as I showed here at the beginning, that's, that's where we're headed. Also much, much more, uh, more humid. Uh, our dew point temperatures probably back up into the 60s to near 70. So uh, Saturday and Sunday at this point in time look muggy and very summer-like and, and somewhat uncomfortable. Uh, precipitation totals here for the next week, as I mentioned, most areas drier than normal, ranging from a half to an inch across the far northern part of the state to less than a quarter of an inch in the south. So again, the lack, something to think about here, at least in terms of planning, especially across southern lower Michigan, uh, probably the water, water needs are going to be elevated temperatures increase back up to above normal levels. And uh, along those lines and that theme, our potential evapotranspiration rates will be increasing back to above normal levels here this week, probably uh, three, four hundredths of an inch per day greater than normal. And if you, you do the division here, the math, uh, most of these areas are in the upper teens in terms of daily average values. But we will see uh, certainly an increase probably up to around two tenths of an inch by the beginning of next week. So fairly high water demand here, especially from the uh, weekend and into early next week. Medium range forecast guidance is very consistent and I think it's telling another uh, consistent, well, another uh, a story here in terms of, of direction. But if we look at the upper air map, this, this looks a little bit like the, the map of the graphic on the right hand side here. If we're looking at next week, you can see troughing sort of out over the west or the high, the Great Plains here. Uh, but in general, the jet stream is further poleward than it, uh, it typically is at this time of the year. It's, it's further north into Canada, most of it. That keeps most of the cooler air well to our north. And as a result of this uh, very strong likelihood in the upper right-hand side here of seeing above normal mean temperatures. This uh, the six to ten day and eight to fourteen day outlooks are are they're virtually identical, very very similar, but a very high probability of above normal temperatures. You can actually see the the uh, dark red in here, eighty percent. What that that actually converts to in terms of this this type of graphic, it means that uh, if you look at the the probabilities, eighty percent uh, chance that we will be in the top third or the the third percentile uh, warmest temperatures here looking at this period and a similar for the eight to 14 day time frame, which takes us through the end of next week and the next weekend. Same time, a little bit of a difference. Uh, we have been drier than normal in some parts of the state and the medium range is not as high a confidence as it is for the temperature, the warm temperatures, but also both are suggesting uh, above normal precipitation totals. So a more active storm track with some southwesterly flow off here, that's, that's where that's coming from and more chances for precipitation uh, than we've had here 
uh, certainly in, in the recent, in the last week or two. Uh, new revised forecast for the month of August, that always comes at the last day of the month. And uh, not a big surprise here because this is consistent with what we saw for the three month or the, the seasonal outlooks. But you can see Michigan here in an area, enhanced probabilities once again, warmer than normal. And you just saw that here for the, the medium range time frame. These are, these are all connected. And then that precip, uh, very, very similar forecast for it as well. Michigan's right in between drier than normal to our west, wetter than normal to our south and east. And that's, that's been a, just a consistent theme for several months now. No difference here. Although you can see the green here, the little bit, it's a little bit closer, that area of above normal precipitation, including the southeastern corner of the state, actually, than it has been uh, over the last several weeks. So if, if there's any change in terms of precipitation forecast, it may be edging towards a little bit more towards the above normal side. So we'll wait and see. The big, I think the important news though with the long leads still very consistent in calling for warmer than normal temperatures. So this uh, cooler than normal week that we've had, a little bit of an exception or a break in the pattern, uh, but, but going back likely to, uh, to warmer weather here over the next few weeks. So summarizing, uh, very, very pleasant for the next couple of days. Uh, chance of the next real chance for, for uh, rainfall later this uh, week, overnight Thursday into Friday, but uh, then into the weekend, but at the same time, noticeably warmer and more humid uh, as well. And uh, overall, again, I think it's probably important to say that, uh, especially for the state, that precip totals will remain below normal for, uh, for much of the, night, the upcoming week. And so with the increasing temperatures, there will be increasing water demand, uh, but we'll be back up probably in the daytime above 90 by the end of the weekend and into early next week. And that's consistent with what you saw it just in the, the medium range time frame as well. A lot of next week and then maybe beyond also looking at uh, pretty summer like conditions with above normal temperatures. So I'll stop there and see if uh, there might be any questions. Thank you, Jeff. So um, I guess the bottom line is we're uh, enjoy, enjoy the cool way we had it. Hot and humid is back on the way as we get rolling into August now. It, it, it is and, uh, and more certainly more humid, but that's uh, if we look at the annual cycle, our warmest days of the year, that's the last week of July uh, and into the first couple of weeks of, of August, that's when our, our annual temperature peaks. So, and, all, and it also, not just temperature, but it's also humidity. This is the most humid time of the year, uh, in, in both in terms of, of actual water vapor and in terms of the relative humidity too. So the disease issue with leaf wetness duration, that's always elevated at this time of the year. And certainly our, our forecast looks consistent with that expectation. Yeah, and as we had said, I think before we started recording today, um, lots of dollar spot disease out there. We've seen a lot of it. I mean, um, golf courses is primarily treated except for rough areas, but I have seen some home lawns that have really been affected in other landscape areas. So it sounds like that'll probably continue now as we right. get into August. But hey, we're very good, Jeff. Um, we're going to take next week off. We have our, our turf grass field day next week. So we'll be back the following week um, and look forward to hearing from you then. We'll try to put in an order for a decent day for you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, hopefully, <laughs> five or something like that. And spot yeah. we don't need that. That's for sure. Warm, right. Warm and humid is probably a good a good guess at this point. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Jeff. You bet. Thanks.